Welcome back, everybody, to a Trade Thursday. It's only about that wallet podcast. Today, I'm going to just kind of talk about investing as a whole, a little bit in general. Um, as I do every episode, I do mention that I am not a financial analyst or so forth. So please make sure that you know you trade at your own risk. This is for educational purposes only. So understanding the stock market and also stocks in general. Remember, you're only buying a slice of a company. So if the company is doing well, your pockets will do well as also. And the best thing, always try to remember or try to tell everyone that is getting into stock trading. Same thing even with couponing or understanding your finances. It start with something you already know. So you already know that Nike is a big brand out there. You already know Apple is a big brand out there. You know Microsoft is a big brand out there. But also you know your industry. So if you're in manufacturing, say you're in the airline industry, you already have a know of how things work within that industry and understand, okay, people are not flying right now. Well, there are people flying, but how many are flying? And then also you want to start diving into that company. So a lot of companies do offer a stock option price, which means that you get your options or your shares inside that particular company at a discounted rate because you're an employee. So why not take time out on your free time to understand a company as a whole and look through the company documents? So in some of those places, you can start learning how to read stocks. I'm a visual learner, so I usually go to like YouTube and listen to people walk through uh, different companies and how to understand, not really how to understand, but to get a further understanding of the information that's being presented. So when you look at companies that show P&E and what does P&E stand for, like the P&E ratio. So the P&E ratio is just a pricing earnings ratio, which is, um, just evaluating company by measuring its shares. So it's usually the share price divided by the earnings per share, which will give you the P&E ratio, which is good. Um, so understanding if you if the ratio is too high or if it's too low, whether or not to buy, whether or not to sell. And this these are some of the things that you really want to start diving into when you find a company. And the best way to learn anything is to take small steps. You want to understand one company first, understand your industry. So pick a company that's publicly traded that's in your industry, an industry that you understand. So for me, I understand the technology industry. So always look at Apple, understand how Apple moves, understand how Amazon moves because I use both of those products. And by me having an interest in those companies and understanding their reach, that helps me understand where they're going as a company and how they're operating. So a lot of people understand when Facebook first came out, they were like, well, this company sucks. Who's going to invest in a social media platform? And at the time when I was looking into investing into Facebook, it, w- it was about $20 at the time and not understanding the mindset that was going on and understanding that, hey, there are several billion people in this platform, not understanding that, hey, this is a great opportunity for small businesses to get recognized because it already has the people there. Not understanding that they plan on branching out to other social media platforms and actually start buying them up, i.e. they bought up Instagram. And then since uh, Facebook, I still didn't invest in them. 
honestly, I'm only invested in them only because I do um, an index fund. That's the only reason why I'm in invested with them is through the index fund. But when you look at a company, I'm still going to dive into Facebook because when uh, Facebook went up to about, I, I think, about $100 at the time, um, they were sitting, I think they were just about to get ready to buy Instagram. And so they bought Instagram. And then after they bought Instagram, it was like, hmm, we do well in the uh, messaging space. So we have Facebook Messenger. And they was like, well, we need better encryption. And me not thinking anything, I knew that they were looking for better encryption for their Facebook stuff because a lot of people were talking about um, some of their sessions being hijacked when they were doing FaceTiming using Facebook Messenger. So they wound up buying WhatsApp. So now Facebook owns, where it's already a billion users on that platform, they bought another conglomerate the Instagram platform, where there's another set of billion people, then you buy WhatsApp. And WhatsApp is used globally. So WhatsApp is already in a global space, which now brings Facebook into the other niches of the world that don't utilize Facebook or don't want to use Facebook in any form or fashion. Now, they are even doing a like cryptocurrency, which is Libra. Well, technically they're not doing Libra. It's a whole thing there. So by the way, they're doing cryptocurrency. And with that being said, they are able to encrypt data to and from or even within their platform. And so that means that every time you use their platform, you under, you can understand that they're going to be fully encrypted. Keep in mind that there are other countries that still do not have uh, full access to your internet or even uh, full access to a cell phone, yet alone the internet. So once these other countries, because you got to think about it as a global country, meaning a global company, you have to have access to everyone. That's your goal is to have access to everyone. And but the first thing you have to realize that, OK, well, how do you get to everyone? You have to first make sure that they have access to Internet. Now they have Internet. OK, what is the first thing that you want them to see? Your application. Facebook is already in the social media aspect pretty much all over from messaging to sharing your images, sharing your video, to just having groups uh, to share your thoughts, and even campaigns and everything like that. So when all these companies, these other countries, start to get online, then it's going to flood the market with users, not only just continuous users, uh, who are current, but also some brand new users. So if you know this already, and Google knows this, and all these other worldwide country uh, companies know this, then if you're planning on doing a business and want to make it essential, either A, you're going to start from the ground up, meaning you want to be one of those people that kind of find that gateway. You want to be that middleman that connects the person that never seen the internet to now being the master of the internet, or even just getting that first person, getting that person's feet wet. So this is kind of a startup piece, and it's really great to actually start looking into the digital space with a company. I know I'm talking about a particular company and a worldwide company on a trade Thursdays, but these are the things that you have to think about when you're investing into an into a company. Things are not just simple as okay, we only worry about first world problems. We only care about 
okay, do I have food on my table? Yeah, you can think about that, honestly. But when you're investing, you're investing with a company and you need to understand where they're going. What are the projections? What are their features? And these are the things you're investing in. You're investing in their future because you pump in money to them, which help them, in a sense, borrow the money that you gave them to go out and purchase more products. And this is the whole thing. They're using other people's money to further advance the company. And you do the same thing now. Actually, everybody does it from using the credit cards, from uh, using the HELOC on your actual house, from actually selling your car. When you go to sell anything, you're using somebody else's money. You're trading that money to better your your lifestyle. And that's all they're doing. they saying, hey, we out here. This is our books. This is how we are actually using the money. These are our plans for our future. And this is where we want to take the company. We want to take you with us. And you can't explain it further for anyone, and especially when they read the books. However, a lot of people listen to the media a lot, which kind of hurts a lot of businesses, but also the business owner hurt themselves as well. So that's why it's always good to understand who is the business owner, what are their beliefs, and what are their ways forward for either society, globally, uh, all the way down to you know, how are you using that company? So when you start with a company that you want to invest in, do your research. Take the time out to invest in yourself, to educate yourself about a particular company. No one can take that information away from you. You can always share it. You can always duplicate it, but no one can actually take that away from you. And that's one of the things about investing is that you need to invest in yourself to be a better you and also to share with your friends or family. Because if you hold all the information and not take action on it, then what's the point of the information? You take that information, apply it, learn the ins and outs of it, share with your friends and family or your closest friends or closest family members, and you all grow together. Because in your circle you have to make sure that everybody's growing and everybody's being successful and everybody in your circle either a are in the same industry or they are doing different things in different aspects but y'all all have a core understanding of success on what y'all want to do so you might have a if you have three buddies in your team that are into real estate there is an 80% chance that you will start doing real estate. If there's like 30% of people are into, you know, stock trading, there is an 80% chance you're going to start doing some stock trading. So, you know, why not just start doing some stock trading? The way how I got into stock trading is by, you know, listening to other people listening, reading books. Those were my people that got me into stock trading. I just started reading books. And then I was like, hmm, let me try something. And this was all this year that I started doing trading because I knew that there had to be more out there. I mean, granted, my mom didn't teach me how to stock trade, but it's, I mean, maybe it's something that she never dives into. There's probably have to be something I have to talk to her about too. That should be interesting. Anyway, I don't want to bore you anymore. So lessons to be learned for today and actions that you need to take. The very first thing I definitely want you to do is to pick one company. I want you to learn about their features, where they're going, what they plan on doing with the company. Have they even made any profit? Snapchat hasn't made any profit, but people are betting into their futures, so hoping that they someday will make a profit. 
Maybe Facebook will buy them out. Who knows? But figure out exactly what are they doing, where they plan to take the company, and really dive into it. And that's all I ask, just to kind of read up on it. Take about like 10 minutes. Just 10 minutes of your day. Just sit down and read about it. Or find like two or three articles and just read them for like two minutes. Two minute article for each one. You'll and then start to grow your muscle for that particular company. It's like, yeah, I know this company. I understand this company. I know where they're going at. Okay, cool. Within the next quarter, they're going to do this. Like, this is the level of understanding that I want you to get to. I know this isn't talking about particular stocks today, but I really want to have you focus on understanding what you're getting into when it comes to investing. All right, everybody. See y'all next week on next Thursday to talk about more finances. Again, for those of you who actually are on a schedule to purchase your products, stick with it, honestly. Um, Can't say this enough. I'm going to say this every episode. Figure out what you like and stick with it. Later. Well, that concludes this episode of About That Wallet. I hope this topic was helpful. If you want to get the latest episodes, please subscribe to this podcast, wherever you're listening to it. Remember, it is your duty to know about that wallet. Take care. Be safe. I'm out. Peace.